Hello everyone, how are you all? Hope you are doing good. Today I am back with another video and I will answer another very crucial question which is do you need physics and maths to become pilot? So in some ways yes you need physics and maths and in other ways no. So I will explain it to you why I said so. I will start with explaining in its favor. If you are an Indian and you dream to fly high in the blue skies in order to fulfill the minimum requirement, yes, you need to study physics and maths as subjects in class 12. And may it be any state board or CBSE, this rule applies to all unanimously. If you are student of non-medical or medical with maths, so you have already cleared the minimum requirement to start with your flying training. So what about students of other streams, let's say commerce, medical, arts and humanities who will be missing these two subjects in their class 12th? Can they become pilot? Yes, for sure, you can become pilot. What you need to do is you need to appear for the exams of missing subjects from NIOS or what we call National Institute of Open Schooling. So let's say you are a student of commerce and that too without maths. So you need to appear for both physics and maths exam from NIOS. Another set of students who were asking me about this physics and maths situation were international students who are pursuing higher studies in fields other than maths and science. So what they need to do, let's say um, you are student of Associate of Arts here in Canada and all of a sudden you feel you want to become pilot and start with the flying training. So what you need to do? So the thing is you don't need to give any physics or maths exams here in Canada. You can start with your flying training the very next day or once you are done with your current studies. Like you can go to flying school, get yourself enrolled and once the paperwork is done, you are all set to start with your flying training. However, in case you have plans to fly back to India after your studies are completed here in Canada, in that case, yes, you need to appear for the NIOS exams. And once you are done with that, you can start with your uh, process for uh, license conversion. Okay, so this was all about the official requirements to become pilot. Talking about the no side of the question. This observation is based on my personal experience and the pilots I watched around me. Talking about myself, I was a student of non-medical in India and uh, I scored around 80% marks in my class 12th board examination. After that, I started with my flying training. Right now, I'm done with my private pilot license and uh, working towards getting my commercial pilot license. Recalling my journey of uh, flying training from beginning until this very day, I can confidently claim that I didn't came across any major topics that I studied in physics and maths in class 12. Yes, there were some basic similarities, let's say reading three laws of motion, Newton's three laws of motion, and uh, but knowledge principle, bit of aerodynamics and some basic maths here and there. But all of that was written in the pilot books and I didn't have to go back to the NCRT books to get the reference. So the point I'm trying to make is there were no major similarities between physics and maths in class 12 and subjects I'm studying right now to become pilot. Just think about this. While you are in air flying an airplane, you won't stop midair and start with derivation of kinetic energy or uh, start with proving some mathematical theorem which says LHS equal RHS hence proof. You won't do any of that. All this is not required for flying and even for basic calculation, basic mathematical calculation, we'll use this calculator because human calculation error can lead to very serious consequences in field of aviation. So to minimize the human error, we'll just use calculator and even for calculations of let's say headwinds or fuel consumed by plane will use this device called CX3 so this is how it turns on and uh, it has everything like there are a lot of different menus in it so you can just uh, do a lot of things over here so for example unit conversion altitude cloud base standard atmosphere airspeed fuel so all these things are given in the CX3 
so you don't have to remember any formula or something talking a bit about the airlines there's a different level of technology and computers being used over there just look at the cockpit of this a380 like all i can see is different kind of computers so the scientists and engineers who must have developed these computers they must be expert in their fields like with physics and maths they they will be really expert with that but that is not mandatory for a pilot what is mandatory for pilots is to know when to use the right machine or computer at right time and don't get into the basic idea of its building so i guess i have answered this question really well and a uh, lot of things might have got clear in your mind as well i'll be back with another question of yours in next video until then keep watching the flying rig thank you